How's it going YouTube? Got Fourth Star TCG here and today I'm going to attempt to not answer but provide some insight into a very frequently asked question in the Pokemon community which is, is PSA grading consistent? Uh, is grading reliable? If you submit the same card will it get the same grade? So uh, Normally I do not do this, but I have built up a large selection of cards over the years uh, that I feel were deserving of higher grades than they actually received uh, at PSA the first time I submitted them. So I did a 57 card order to PSA, which was all cards that I'd cracked out of their previously graded cases. And today I'm going to go through the results. Uh, again, this is just uh, 57 cards. This is not, uh, you can't really draw any serious conclusions from this. Uh, but I'll give my general thoughts uh, at the end of the video on the consistency of PSA grading once I go through all these cards. Um, so I have a couple of stacks here. I have a stack of cards that either decreased in grade or remained the same, and I have a stack of cards that went up in grade. Uh, so I'll go through the cards that decreased or stayed the same pretty quickly, and then we'll get into the interesting stuff, the cards that went up in grade after that. So the first card I have here, this is the only card that went down in grade, this Giratina EX from Dragon Blast, a really nice card, uh, decreased from a PSA 9 to a PSA 5, so a minus 4 point grade uh, decrease, uh, which is pretty interesting. There must be some kind of dent or crease in this. Um, I actually think maybe I can see one right in the corner there. It's a tiny impression, perhaps. Um, but likely that, you know, perhaps they missed it the first time around, or either maybe I damaged it, taking out it out of the case or something like that. Um, you know, can never be too sure. Next up, a Celebi EX from Cold Flare remained a PSA 9. Most of these cards uh, were 9s, and um, most of them remained 9s. Ampharos, Wind from the Sea, Unlimited Edition, 9. Got a... Rocket's Hitmonchan EX from Rocket Gang Strikes Back. That also remained a 9. Blaziken EX from Magma vs. Aqua remained a 9. Rocket's Entei EX, Rocket Gang Strikes Back, Unlimited Edition, 9. Armaldo EX, Mirage Forest, 9. This card actually should be in this pile. <laughs> Remember that now. Uh, two Altaria EX, first edition, stayed nines. We had a Shockwave Tyranitar EX, first edition, in the constructed starter deck, stayed a nine. A Suicune from the Legend Perfect set, this stayed a PSA nine. A couple of Level X cards. Got big level X cards, Rayquaza and Gengar level X. Was really hoping this Gengar level X would get upgraded. I think perhaps the centering might be off a little bit on it. Um, both of those, still nines. Milotic EX, nine. Staraptor FB level X, nine. Archeops. Dark Rush, 9. Full Art Lugia, 9. Yeah, most of these cards were PSA 9s that I cracked, uh, thinking they would be deserving of 10s. Staraptor FB again. Got a Stormfront Charizard, 1st edition, PSA 9. A lot of these were uh, cards that I needed for my collection that I was really just hoping that I could uh, get the upgrade on and not have to go back and find another mint raw copy. Stuff like this Embor, again, really hard to find um, in good condition, so might as well give it another shot at PSA. I really don't think it's unethical to crack and resubmit um, when it starts getting dangerous is when you're like pretty obviously just doing it over and over and over again. You submit a card five times, six times, seven times. You know, I've heard of cards that were submitted basically like 10 times before uh, 
um, they got the 10 gray, you know, they'd fluctuate between eight and nine. And then, you know, one time they'd get lucky and they'd get a grader that perhaps overlooks something and they get, um, they get a 10. And that's what, I, that's when I feel it's pretty scummy, but, you know, submitting again, just having them take a look over it a, a second time. I, f I don't think there are really any serious ethical problems with that. Lots of full arts here. I still need that Mewtwo in a PSA 10. Beautiful grout on here. This card is pretty nuts now. I think I saw a uh, copy sell for someone in the neighborhood of $250 on Yahoo recently. At that point, don't buy a raw copy, just buy a nine. Like, I can't imagine that that grout on is, uh, is worth more than 250 bucks in a nine, but maybe I'm just out of date on my prices. Victini, this is another one I need for my collection, so I uh, was hoping it would get the upgrade, but it did not. Go Lurk Ultra Rare, lots of black white ultra rares. Again, these are just so hard to find, so like <laughs> the best chance of a mint copy is buying a PSA 9 and, uh, and hoping, I suppose. Blastoise from Koro Koro. This is my Shining Mew. Um, this was a five previously and it remained a five. I still cannot figure out why. PSA must see something that, that I don't. I mean, to get a five twice in a row, there must be something wrong with it. Um, but it's really just not anything I can find. So. <clears throat> the last card that remained the same, Politoed from Split Earth, remained a PSA nine. So there we go. Those are the cards that stayed the same. Uh, the majority of the submission did stay pr exactly the same in grade, um, which I think is fairly significant, uh, especially because I picked out the cards that I thought had the best shot of being upgraded. Um, so a good portion of the uh, of the submission remaining the same. That uh, that's pretty interesting. So next up we have the cards that did get upgraded. Um, so. And these, some of these are interesting. Some of them just kind of make sense. Um, so this, a Regirock EX from Undone Seal, first edition. This was upgraded from a PSA 7 to a PSA 9, so a two-point increase in grade. Uh, I was never really sure why this originally got a PSA 7, um, but pretty interesting to see it jump to a PSA 9. Next up, really happy about this one, a Rockets Hitmonchan EX, which got the upgrade from a 9 to a 10. That's really nice. I love these Rockets Gang, Rocket Gang Strikes Back EX cards. They are super hard to find in mint condition these days, uh, so I was very lucky to uh, get this in a 10 the second go around. Next up, you got a Mega Rayquaza EX Ultra Rare from Bandit Ring. Really big card here. Uh, I remember when this card was relatively cheap because uh, the pull rate was actually pretty good on these uh, gold Ultra Rares out of Bandit Ring. Uh, I remember seeing them in something like you know forty percent of boxes. Uh, you get one, which is pretty crazy. Obviously, most of uh, XY Seven has been opened by now, and there's not much hanging around. Uh, so, Mint 9, this was an upgrade from a PSA 6, so a three-point upgrade in, uh, in grade. Again, I, could, I looked at this really closely. I could not tell why it scored a PSA 6, um, but did get the upgrade to a 9. Next up, we have a Rapidash from Expedition, scored the Gem Mint 10 grade. This was an upgrade from a PSA 9. Got a Sudowoodo, Wind from the Sea, first edition. This also got the upgrade from the PSA 9 to PSA 10. It's great. Got a Scizor here, Wind from the Sea, first edition. Uh, this one I was really surprised when it came back with a 9 in a previous submission. Um, I thought this, I couldn't find anything wrong with this card. I thought it was a shoe in for a 10. 
Um, so I was happy when it came back with the 10 this time around. Next up, PSA 9 Maze Torchic. This was an upgrade from a PSA 8. And I was kind of surprised. I realized, I originally I thought this card was like super clean. Uh, back's really nice. I thought this had a shot at a 10. Once I cracked it out of the 8 case, I realized it had a bit of scratching on this glossy part, uh, which is hard to see in a PSA case because uh, it's so reflective. Uh, you can't really get it in the right light. So I, th I don't think this card is 10 quality. I think a 9 is a, uh, is a fair grade. Next up, got a Mint 9 on the Superior from Dragon Blade. This was another upgrade from a PSA 6. So we have a few PSA 6s going to PSA 9s, uh, which is pretty interesting, to say the least. Next up, we have a Shaman Level X from Stormfront. Landform Shaman Level X here. Getting the upgrade from the PSA 9, so that's great. Next up, we have the Hydreigon Ultra Rare from Psycho Drive. This card got upgraded from a PSA 7 to a PSA 9, so a two-point increase in grade there. Again, this was another one that I looked at. I really could not see anything wrong with it, that it would get the uh, 7 grade. I think after looking really closely, I found a little tiny point of wear um, along the top, so I definitely understand a 9 grade. Uh, but I didn't think it was uh, it was worthy of a seven. Next up, we got a Salamence EX from Clash of the Blue Sky. It received the Gem Mint 10 grade first edition Clash of the Blue Sky, a pretty rare card right there. Uh, this is a really, really cool Salamence EX card. Salamence, one of my favorite Pokemon. So I was really happy to see this get the Gem Mint 10 grade. This next one is a big one and another one that I was very surprised uh, that it scored a 9 when it first came back. It is this beautiful Nine Tails Hollow from Dragon Frontiers. Uh, so this again, I when I first got this in, I, the centering was on point, the card was beautiful, it's amazing Hajime Kusahima art. Uh, one of the best holographic cards from Dragon Frontiers. I was really hoping to get this one in a 10. Uh, luckily, the second time around, uh, I did get it. Again, I feel this card is super worthy of the 10 grade, uh, so I was very happy to see it come back like that. This, uh, this helps out quite a bit with my uh, Delta Species collection and my Japanese Dragon Frontiers collection, so I'm really happy about this card. Next up... Got the Mewtwo EX Expansion Pack, first ever EX set. This was upgraded from a PSA 8 to a PSA 9. Another really nice card, Delta Species Deoxys Hollow from Holland Phantoms, the Speed Form Deoxys. Beautiful Masakazu Fukuda art there. Truly incredible. Yeah, so very, very happy with that. Again, these Delta Species cards, most of these cards are just so hard to find uh, in good condition these days. Next up, we got Dark Tyranitar, holographic card from Rocket Gang, Strikes Back. Uh, I bought a set of these. I bought like three of them at once, I think. Um, one originally scored a 10, the other two got nines. This one I felt was the strongest of the two nines. Um, and again, just beautiful artwork there, and I'm very happy that it did uh, that it did come back with a gem at 10 grade. I think it was well deserved. Next up, Salamence Level X Advent of Arceus. Very very nice card here. And uh, luckily, I already have a gem at 10 Salamence in my collection, uh, but I'm very happy to. Add another one, perhaps for trade, to uh, acquire some of the few remaining level X's that I have. It's one of my goals for the rest of the year is to uh, finish up the Japanese level X set. 
Here's a big one. This was a big upgrade, let me tell you. This uh, was upgraded from a PSA 9 to a PSA 10 first edition Stormfront Charizard. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. Amazing Meteor Rita art. Uh, these are prone to chipping in the corners, these Diamond and Pearl era secret rares. Uh, so I was very happy to see this one come back with the Gem Mint 10 grade. Uh, yeah, it's like, it's expensive to do these regrades, but if you do get the upgrades on some of these big cards, it does end up paying off. Um, so it is something that you have to be careful with. You can't just throw a bunch of cards in and assume that, you know, you're going to, um, assume that you're going to get upgraded, uh, cause it is expensive. This is again, 57 card submission, about $15 a card plus shipping. Um, so you can do the math there is how much I paid to get these cards regraded. Next up, I was really happy about this one, uh, Eveltal EX from Y Collection, first edition. This is a card that I've been after for a while. I've bought many copies of it. It's really not all that expensive, um, raw, but I think it's beautiful. I think it's going to age very well. Um, really, really nice, simple, beautiful full art card and very playable back in the day. So... Very glad to get this one in a PSA 10. Uh, it's been, yeah, you know, just very happy because all the cards, all the copies that I bought, even though they're pretty cheap, uh, all had like one little thing wrong with them. I submitted a couple of my best copies. They all got nines. Um, so I was happy that second time around we got a, a 10 on Neveltal. Next up, here's another huge upgrade that I was really, really happy about. Lugia EX Full Art from Plasma Gale. This was one that I needed for my collection. I had purchased a couple of Full Art Lugias uh, and they all scored nines. I was really hopeful that uh, one would score a 10. I picked out the best one out of those nines to regrade. Um, I think I put both of them because I had a nine uh, in this submission. I think I put both of them in there just for just for the chance, uh, and I was lucky that one of them did get upgraded to a Gem Mint 10. Uh, yeah, this is another car that it's just like, it's really hard to find mint copies these days. Um, so I was very happy that I purchased multiple copies and I was able to uh, get the 10 on a regrade. Next up, we got a Dark Right EX from Dark Rush, PSA 9. This is upgraded from a PSA 8. The final full art card in this submission, an Entei EX, this is another one that I needed for my collection. Uh, so I was very happy to see the upgrade to a Gem Mint 10. Uh, yes, we knocked out a good amount of cards for my collection, especially from the black white full art era and the um, and the level X era in this uh, in this submission. So that's that was the main reason why I did these regrades was that because I had so many cards that I had nines that were holes in my collection that uh, would be very expensive to purchase. Again, like purchasing a PSA 10 Lugia and a PSA 10 Entei, you know, the cost of that purchase would be probably about double what I paid to regrade all of these cards, right? So it just makes sense in terms of a collection standpoint. Um, to do the regrades as opposed to just trying for the, um, as opposed to just buying the cards outright. And last but not least, Town on No Map Zapdos Gem Mint 10. Really, really happy about this one. This is another beautiful Hajime Kusahima art that I thought, you know, there was no reason why it should not be a 10. And it did come back a 10 the second time around. So, out of everything, the final stats for this submission. Uh, again, so this is a 57 card order. I had 15 cards, right? 15 right there that were upgraded from PSA 9 to PSA 10. I had uh, seven cards that went from below a PSA 9 to a PSA 9 but no cards went from below a PSA 9 to a PSA 10. Uh, I had one card that was a PSA 9 that went down to a PSA 5. That was the only card that went down in grade. And 34 out of these 57 cards, everything in this stack here, 
remained the same. 33 PSA 9s stayed PSA 9s, and one PSA 5 stayed a PSA 5. So overall, you know, like again, again, as I said in the beginning, I cannot answer the question with a 57 card regrade uh, of whether PSA grading is consistent or not. Uh, but what I think is that this order provides a lot of good evidence that they are in fact pretty consistent. Um, you know, well over half of the submission, I think it's probably about like 60 something percent um, once you do out the math, uh, stayed the same, the exact same grade. Uh, and again, I went through my hundreds of graded cards and I picked out the best candidates that I thought had the cleanest shot of being upgraded to a 10, right? I didn't just pull a bunch of nines that were obvious nines with, you know, dings and edgeware and stuff and, and resubmit them. Um, I only paid if I thought it had a real chance of being upgraded. Uh, so I feel like, you know, this puts a good amount of evidence that, you know, PSA is pretty consistent. You know, over half of the, well over half of the cards that I thought would be uh, due an upgrade, uh, when I submitted them, they stayed the same, right? I've been grading for, oh goodness, eight years, nine years. I think it's about nine years that I've been grading, which is pretty, pretty nuts. Um, yeah, my first graded submission was in 2014. So I have a lot of experience with PSA. I've submitted hundreds of cards through PSA over the years, very familiar with their grading standards. Um, and yeah, so I got some upgrades, right? I got a good amount, I got 15 PSA 9s that went to PSA 10s. Um, so clearly I knew, you know, something was... Uh, that these cards had, some of the cards had a good shot of being upgraded. Um, and again, we had several cards, these seven cards that went from below PSA 9 up to uh, PSA 9. So you certainly can do it, right? You can get your cards upgraded. I think you gotta look really closely at them. Um, again, I was not trying to, uh, I was not trying to waste my money. If a card was fairly graded, I didn't wanna pay 15 bucks to, uh, to have it be fairly graded again. Uh, I do not have all that much money to just kind of throw darts in the dark and try to try to hit on a PSA dartboard. Uh, so I tried my best to pick out the best quality cards. And yes, I did get some upgrades, but most of them did not get upgraded. Um, I could give you statistics on, you know, reliability and stuff. Uh, but again, I don't think it's really valid to give you statistics on things like a 57 card regrade. I think you probably want at least 200 to 300 uh, cards before you start uh, before you start talking about giving any kind of reliability statistics. So there we go. Let me know your thoughts on this submission. Uh, let me know your thoughts on the consistency of PSA grading uh, in the comment section below, and I'll see you all in the next video.